let's do it this time. Hey everybody, welcome to Teaching Tilt Brush. And this week we are doing our fabulous sum up for our mixed reality series. So if you would like to do this type of studio presentation, whether you're putting yourself in Tilt Brush or any other of these programs, this is the series we're talking about. And I'm gonna take these darn things off before I trip over something. So we're going to be looking at the things you need to get going in, in mixed reality streaming. Now we've already done one specifically looking at the software you're going to need. And we'll try to do a cut uh, card so you can link to that if you haven't seen it yet. And we've done a second video about the hardware you're going to need. And we'll try to link to that as well. This will include the cameras, the green screens, and anything else. Well, today we're here in actual reality instead of virtual reality to see if we can show you the whole thing in a functioning studio where we've got all the lights set up, the cameras set up, so you can see what's going to be going on. Now, I'm not a professional camera person, so the, please excuse any little bit of unsteady camera photography, but we're going to show you how the studio works. We're going to combine the software in the PC connect the PC to the hardware, set up the hardware in a room so it all makes sense and you can all see it on the final screen as its final output. So welcome to our studio. This is the place on Maui. We are fortunate enough to have a very large studio space. We've actually got one whole section of the room green screened off. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see We've got it floor to ceiling green screen. Not everybody has that kind of convenience. They do sell small portable screens. This basically can be set up as a framework that's roughly seven foot by nine foot with a little bit of green on the bottom. So you can do this type of thing even if you don't have a room. Even something as a bed sheet behind you. If I'm just doing close up shots like this, then it might be even easier just to have a bed sheet behind you on the bookshelf so that we can do this as a virtual reality interview type of thing. We've got the big room, so we've got it set up. Now with a big room like this, shadows can be a problem. You can see if I don't have lights on the green screen, then as I move around, I can create ghost shadows and images that's, that make a, the chroma key a problem. So in a large setup like this, you actually want studio lights. Not to light up the person, so much as to light up the screen. So as I move around, it's not casting bright and obvious shadows. It could be something as elaborate as these type of studio screen uh, lights here, or it could be just something as simple as a couple of desk lamps if you're doing the close-up shots. Anything to keep the, th the background fairly evenly covered, uh, covered evenly lit. We also have a little bit of top lighting and even a light on the camera. So as I pick up the camera and point at things, things will stay nice and bright. So here we have the green screen side. Moving over here is the actual control station. Here is our i7 computer. We're going to be getting a new video card for it, running two screens. On the screens, you can see the software. Over here, is our broadcast software, in this case OBS. I'm gonna tilt so we don't have the light bloom as much, but you can see where we're controlling the broadcast, the audio input, you can see the volume going up and down. This side is gonna be the compositor, where we fire up Tilt Brush and use the compositor to send our broadcast the final image. So this is the software running on screen. When we launch compositor, it's gonna to wanna to take over control of the camera so that it can combine that camera with a program, all being run from our workstation underneath. The cables, USB or HDMI, then connect us to the actual setup. And in this case, we've got our microphone, and whether your camera is wall-mounted or on a tripod, here's where we've got our main setup, our inputs. If you're lucky enough, we happen to have an HDMI cable going right into the computer via a capture card. If you don't have a capture card, or maybe you're running a laptop, we also have these devices, which basically give you an HDMI and USB converter. So I could plug that directly into the output of a camera and have it run straight into the computer. 
either an external device like this or an internal card where it's plugged right in. So we basically have an open space, whether it's half a room or a garage perhaps, where you can set up a large field. If it's big, you're gonna need lighting to keep control of shadows. Otherwise, I can now set up the headset, dive right in right here, and use the software to combine all these pieces together. So we're lucky that we've got a good 12 by 12 foot space to work with, three or four meters to run around with. Most people are gonna have a much smaller space, even if it's only six feet by six feet, two meters square type of thing, that's plenty of space, pull back with a camera and you can see things moving around. Here's a case where if we're that close, we're gonna want the camera higher on our tripod so that we can have a better rapport with our audience. You're not looking at the belly button the whole time. In this case, with the camera down low, maybe I'll get down like this, and now we can see what's going on behind me, whether it's tilt brush or pistol whip or any other game that allows this type of interactivity. If you're looking forward to a game, you can find out if it's set to do this type of interaction. There are various compositor companies that have their software for free, so any game developer using certain systems like Unity can make sure to include this virtual camera mixed reality type of thing. Hopefully this helps you get started. You don't have to start quite on this scale, but these are the main components all working together. Now that I've got my camera showing me against the green screen, I'm gonna fire up the live compositor to replace the green screen with tilt brush. That's how this whole thing works. We may play with some video editing for the YouTube version, splicing in some tilt brush at the beginning of the end. But for those of you watching live, we're staying in our actual reality for today's teaching tilt brush, just so you can see how the studio operates behind the scenes. The compositor now overlays tilt brush behind me. So as I start waving around the controllers, everything mats together. But if you happen to walk into our office midstream, it's just me standing here in front of the green screen waving things around. Very silly, very fun, but hopefully it makes for a very effective teaching video so you guys can learn how to use these programs. Let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to show you. There's lots more tilt brush to come, but if you have specific questions, let us know in the comments below, let us know in our stream chats, and we'll try to get you the information you're looking for. We do this live every week on Twitch TV slash Shameless Mayhem, and it's all archived on YouTube.com slash Shameless Mayhem. Thanks for joining me for teaching Tilt Brush today in the real world for a change, uh, but I missed the googly eyes, so when we come back next time, we'll be back in VR using our mixed reality, and now you know how to do it yourself. I hope this was fun. I hope this was informative. Subscribe for plenty of more to come or share with your friends if you think they would be interested in this too. But for now, I'm going to sign off so we can get back into our safe virtual reality away from the real world. Thanks everybody and have fun.